Uh, and uh, yeah, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to my my talk. Uh, so, in my presentation, I will be talking about some uh, some recent uh, uh, efforts from our laboratory in realizing quantum computing case in a continuous variable optical uh, cluster state. So, as we know, there are many different platforms um, by which uh, quantum computing can be realized, and uh, one of the or two of the front running technologies are superconducting electronics as well as uh, trapped ions, uh, but this is not what we're using in our lab. I mean, we are using an optical approach uh, or we're trying to 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 use um, an approach where qubits are uh, encoded into bosonic uh, modes, uh, so bosonic uh, quantum computing. And uh, of course, there are many different uh, qubits you can think of uh, in a bosonic mode uh, or in a harmonic oscillator, but uh, probably the, the three most um, studied approach, pr approaches are those that are uh, shown here on my on my slide. So there's the, the catch state uh, a qubit where uh, the qubit is uh, encoded as superpositions of coherent states. There's the dual, dual rail qubit where the qubit is encoded as uh, as different paths or different rails of a single photon, as well as the Gottesman Kitev principal qubit that I will come back to soon. So uh, there are, of course, advantages and disadvantages of all these approaches. Uh, so the, the, the dual rail qubits is probably the one that has been studied the most because it's relatively easy today to generate single photons. So actually the, uh, the phase-based picture of the Wigner function that we see on the slide is actually uh, from experimentally uh, generated data from our lab. Uh, so this is a state that we can relatively easy generate in the lab. So therefore it's easy to generate the dual rail qubit, but the, the disadvantage of using this approach is that it's uh, significantly difficult to to um, to generate uh, or to make entangling gates uh, or fu fusing gates, uh, which is often done uh, non-deterministically, which will lead to a, a large overhead. Then there's uh, also the catch state qubit, which is also a rather difficult uh, uh, approach to deal with. Uh, maybe not so much in the microwave regime, but in the optical regime, it's quite difficult to. I mean, first of all, to generate the qubit, but also to realize a quantum error correction coding based on cat state qubits. And that's why we have been focusing mainly on the DKP uh, qubit, the Gottesman Kisel's critical qubit, which indeed is also not easy to generate, actually has never been generated in the optical regime, but it has some, uh, some uh, significant advantages. And that's why we have been taking this approach. Yeah, so why do we use the DKP qubit? So first of all, all the Clifford operations, a single mode and two mode Clifford operations, they are Gaussian. Uh, and this is uh, a, a circuit or a circuit uh, example is shown here on the on the top right, uh, where we demonstrate or where we show that uh, you can implement uh, single and two mode uh, gates uh, using a teleportation. So you start simply with a two mode squeeze states, and uh, one half of the entangled state is 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 combined with the input state in a joint bell measurement, a continuous variable bell measurement, where you perform two uh, quadrature measurements. And uh, depending on the measurement strategy, the quadrature you're measuring, you are transforming the state or you're implementing a gate onto your state. So therefore, just by changing the, the measurement setting of your bell measurement, you can realize uh, an arbitrary a single mode Gaussian gate. And this can be easily um, extended to two mode and uh, high order mode uh, uh, transformations. Also non-Clifford operations, uh, uh, can be done using Gaussian transformations if you have GKP states at your uh, disposal. Uh, so, so here you also need to implement a two-mode Gaussian state. You have to do a homodyne measurement and then you feed forward and perform another Gaussian transformation. So this is a non-Clifford operation. Now you have a complete set of uh, a universal set of uh, operations that is needed for universal quantum computing using only Gaussian transformations if you have GKP states as your resource. And finally, and uh, most importantly, you can do uh, quantum error correction coding with um, uh, using Gaussian transformations, also assuming you have GKP states as your resource. So that's uh, one, th these are the main reasons that, that we are pursuing uh, this approach to quantum computing. So we are using a measurement-based uh, approach where through measurements, we are implementing uh, quantum gates or quantum computing and this is start out with uh, generating an entangled uh, cluster state, for example, a one-dimensional cluster state where you have, in this case, four entangled states that are then entangled with an input state. And then through measurements, single measurement of the, of the different, different nodes, you can simply perform single mode unitary transformations or single mode gates. So this is one gate operation, then you can form another gate operation and so on and so forth. And then you have an output state on which you have performed uh, four 
a single more gates. If you have more than one input mode, then you need to go to one more dimension. So you have a two-dimensional uh, uh, cluster state, and now you have four input uh, modes, and you can perform a different sequence of um, of, uh, of measurements and end up with uh, with an output state uh, on which you have now performed both single and two mode uh, gates. So, and this is called a cluster state. And the procedure that we will be applying and that I'll be discussing for the rest of my talk is first to prepare a cluster state. That's what you have to do first. Then you have to figure out what, uh, what settings you have to prepare your measurements in, in order to perform a certain map or a certain computation. And then you simply have to go ahead and measure. Okay, so first we need to generate the cluster state. And uh, we do this uh, using uh, squeezed uh, states of light uh, produced in an optical biomedic uh, oscillator. They are produced in, in free space and injected into optical fibers. Then uh, they meet on a 50-50 beam splitter to generate uh, an EPR state or two more squeezed states. And this is also shown here in, in the graph, graph representation where different nodes represent different modes, different optical modes of our state. And we see that the links are being formed as a result of the entangling operation at the beam splitter. So uh, <clears throat> the next thing we do is that we delay one of the most with respect to the other one, and then we make another entanglement operation by which we generate uh, what is called the one-dimensional cluster state. And in this, in this cluster state, it's actually sufficient for realizing any single mode gate. But we need to, uh, to add another dimension in order to also allow for, for uh, two mode gates. And this is done by using another delay line uh, with a length of n times tau. Um, another entangling operation. And by doing this, we are simply coiling up our 1D cluster state into a two-dimensional cylinder. And by adding another beam splitter, the beam splitter number three, we are linking the, 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 the coil up 1D cluster state into a, a, an entangled two-dimensional cluster state. And then at the end of the day, we simply uh, ver verify that indeed we have performed a two-dimensional cluster state. And we do this by measuring the nullifiers and and show that these, uh, the variance of these nullifiers uh, are, um, are lower than the, the shot noise uh, level. Okay, so just a quick lab tour how we generate this in the lab. So we use a rather bulky uh, optical chromatic oscillators. They're bulky, but they produce a nice, clean, squeeze states. Uh, so this is seen from the, from the top. It's also important to note that we're generating squeeze light at uh, the telecom wavelength, 1550 nanometer, which also means that we can easily connect different platforms, uh, different uh, computing modules can be easily connected. Uh, so we couple the light into optical fibers right after they're produced in the optical biomedic oscillators. So the rest after the optical biomedic oscillator, the rest of the setup goes on in, in fibers. And this is what we see here. So we see that the short delay, 50 meters lying here, and the long delay of 600 meters is in this uh, box here. And the optical uh, or the uh, homodyne detectors are shown here on the left. Okay, uh, we're not the only one to generate the uh, cluster state. It has also been uh, uh, generated by other groups, uh, in particular the group of, uh, of Akira Fushawa. They produce a, a similar state as the one that we have produced. And there has also been very nice progress in other groups, for example, the group of uh, Nicola Trapps and Valentina Parisi that we will hear after my talk, uh, as well as the group of uh, Oliver Fister, where they have been producing uh, cluster states uh, uh, between different uh, frequency components uh, as opposed to our case where we are producing uh, entanglement between different uh, temporal modes. Okay, so our next step is to implement the uh, gates in our, um, in our cluster state. And the idea is to, is to encode the input states along the circumference of our cylinder and then perform the, uh, the computation or the teleportation along the cylinder. Uh, of the yeah, along the, the, the cylindrical uh, cluster state. So here again, we see the optical setup for generating the, the, the cluster state and the measurement system, the measurement device, uh, which is like a continuous variable bell measurement device consisting of two homodyne detectors. And just by setting the, the measurement angle of these homodyne detectors, we can execute different quantum computing gates. So for the, the single mode gate uh, case, we are carving out or selecting out wires of, uh, of entangled uh, uh, wires uh, or entangled wires and, and every every second mode or every second wire is then left untangled uh, or disentangled, which is simply done by performing a measurement with a phase angle of pi over four. 
By doing this, then we're disentangling every single mode, and thereby we're carving out single lines of entangled cluster state. And along these lines, then we can perform uh, along these lines we can perform single mode gates, <clears throat> uh, and we can do this on six input modes simultaneously. It's also important that we, we to note that we import uh, that we are measuring the the modes, the optical modes along the circumference of our our cylinder. Uh, and and this is uh, this is uh, the right order. Uh, and using using this order of uh, the se sequence of measurements, we can implement any single mode gate, any two mode gate, and any combination of single and two mode gates. Okay, uh, so we implemented three different uh, single mode gates: the rotation gate, the shear gate, and the squeezing gate, just by tuning the uh, the measurement settings of the two homodyne detectors. Uh, and uh, as a result of the of the gate operation, we are introducing noise to our state. <clears throat> of course, we want to minimize this noise, but this noise is dictated uh, by two factors. I mean, first of all, it's dictated by, dictated by the amount of squeezing we have available in our optical medic oscillator. This was around uh, 4 dB of squeezing. It's also dictated by the, the architecture of the cluster state, which is not optimal. It's not the optimal architecture. It can be made in, in different ways by which we can reduce the, the noise. But with this architecture, or with this amount of uh, um, squeezing, we expect to add around 6 dB of noise in, in, in our gate transformations. And this is indeed what we see here. Uh, so, uh, so there is a, a 6 dB jump from the initial squeezing of 4 dB up to what we actually measure. And this we actually consistently measure for any rotation gate, for any shear gate, and for any squeezing gate, where we vary the squeezing angle, uh, the shearing angle, as well as the, uh, the rotation angle. Okay, and then we go on to demonstrate the two mode uh, two mode gates. It is a little bit the same as the single mode gate, but now we have to entangle uh, two lines or two links uh, uh, in order to in order to um, uh, implement a two mode entangling gate between two input uh, uh, beams. But again, the, uh, the 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 procedure is the same. We simply just change the measurement setting of our homodyne detector to implement the uh, the the system or to implement the, the compute, computing gate. And we uh, estimate the, the gate noise again, and we, uh, we measure around uh, 8 dB of uh, noise in, in the two more gate, as expected. And now we try to combine different, uh, different gates into a small circuit, a circuit of uh, 12 gates, consisting of uh, two, uh, two more gates, some Fourier gates, and a number of uh, identity gates. So in, in, in total, uh, 12 gates were implemented on three input states. So this is a simplistic matrix of the of the transformation, uh, and these are measurements of the simplistic matrix. And we see a uh, nice uh, agreement between the measurement and the expected uh, uh, simplistic uh, matrix. <clears throat> and we also uh, characterized uh, the the gate noise, and we indeed measure what we expected. All right. So now we have the demonstrated uh, um, universal. Gaussian transformations in a, a cluster state, a last cluster state, um, uh, but that there's still some way to go before it is um, universal and uh, and uh, fault tolerant. So, uh, one of the disadvantages of this approach is that it's quite difficult to produce the the GKP state. Uh, so, the GKP state that we need for as a qubit, what we also need is as a resource in our non-clifford gates and in our quantum error correction uh, um, gates. <clears throat> so therefore we need to we need to focus on focusing on in the future uh, generating a GKP state. So one one strategy, I mean there's been different proposal proposal on how to generate a DKP state, but one one strategy is 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 one we came up with uh, that has just been um, put on the archive if you're interested in seeing the details. I um, suggest that you look up the, the manuscript, but just uh, uh, shortly, it's about um, uh, using a cavity uh, QED, interacting with, uh, with squeezed light in order to generate GKP state. So the idea is to, is to embed a, a free level system into a high finesse cavity. Uh, so it's a two lower line uh, <coughs> spin uh, levels uh, and, a, and an excited uh, state uh, 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 level where the cavity as well as the um, uh, the optical field is resonant uh, with uh, with the excited state and the and the and one of the uh, the, the spin states <clears throat> and the 
and the, the input field will now feel a phase shift if the, the free level system starts out in the zero state. But it will not feel a phase shift uh, if it's uh, prepared in the, uh, in, the, in the one state. So now if you prepare the, the atom in a superposition of, uh, of a zero in the one state, then you will see, then you'll create a, a, an entangled superposition of the, uh, between the, uh, the free level system or the, the two li lower lying level of the free level system and the, uh, the reflected optical beam. Uh, so, and if this reflected off the optical beam is a squeeze state, then you are, will end up gen generating a GKP state. For example, if you start with a squeeze state, you displace it, and then you let it interfere with our free level system in the cavity, then you are generating a superposition of, of two uh, squeeze states, and then you let this interact again, or displace it, let it interact again with, your, with our free level system, you will be generating a superposition of four uh, squeeze states, and so on and so forth, and that's indeed a GKP state. So this is one way of... Uh, generating a DKP state. So we also need to do some quantum error correction coding. So we need to correct for qubit errors uh, in our system in order to make it fault tolerant. And the, uh, and the way to do this is to, uh, is to add another dimension uh, in our, of our cluster state. So it's not, it should be a three dimensional cluster state. So you allow some space for, for the error correction code. Uh, and uh, we have proposed a um, setup for realizing such a, uh, a system, so it's a little bit similar to the two-dimensional um, cluster state. So you start by generating two more squeezing, you delay one of them, uh, and uh, with, with with a certain uh, delay, uh, by which you are pairing or you're setting up pairs of entangled states in a time lattice, as shown here, so in, in in three dimensions. And now we can perform another entangling operations in order to make these wires uh, longer in this uh, time uh, lattice uh, and then you can uh, entangle pairs of wires either in this direction or to in this direction by adding a variable beam splitter or variable entangling operations so now you can start the entangling different nodes depending on what gate you want to implement whether you want to implement a gate between this line or this uh, link here a wire and this wire here then you will be activating this variable beam splitter if you want to do it between these two, you will be acti activating the other variable beam splitter. <clears throat> okay, uh, and, uh, and and because it's three dimension, then now you can also start making the surface codes uh, on one of the dimensions. Okay, uh, my time is uh, running up, out, so I'll just be acknowledging the the people behind the work. So in particular, Megal, who really took the lead in the in this work, but he worked uh, together with Jonas and Kaspar and Tsuyoshi. And Jakob has been uh, doing a part of the the, the theory, theory work I have been presenting. And then I also acknowledge the rest of my group. So thank you so much for your attention.